Now, uh, here I'm going to give you a very interesting problem. And that interesting problem uh, has many applications in mathematics all over the place. But for stating that problem, I need some terminology. So I'm going to describe uh, binary rooted trees. Before I describe what they are, let me give you an example. So rooted is, yeah, I mean you need a node. I'm just going to call it the empty set. We are doing set theory after all. I should not use anything else. Then every node can have at most two children. That is the meaning of binary. And it's a tree. So no, there are no cycles. So once I bifurcate, then I will continue bifurcating and so on. So for example, this is a rooted tree. It is a binary rooted tree. The way I am going to label it is also very simple. It's based on the positioning on the page. So the left one will always be called 0, the right one will always be called 1. So what will be this node? 0, 0. This is 0, 0, 0, this is 0, 0, 1, this is 0, 1, this is 1, 0, this is 1, 1, this is 1, 0. 0, 1, 0, 1 and 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So what is a binary rooted tree now formally? Yeah. So it is a T which is a subset of zero one star. Okay, what is zero one star? Perhaps you are confused about that. It is defined to be union of zero one to the power n, where n is less than omega. So basically, 0, 1 star is the collection of all finite length strings of zeros and 1s. Looking at the example, it's, it should be clear, yeah, and it should satisfy something. Satisfying uh, if sigma is a prefix of tau and tau is a node in T then sigma is also a node in T. Okay, so now let us look at this. So this is a prefix relation. Yeah. Uh, states that sigma is a prefix of tau. Okay, so for example, 0, 0 is a prefix of 0, 0, 1. Prefix means something which occurs in the beginning. And 1 is not a prefix of 0, 1, 0, 0. Obviously. <coughs> so what we are saying here that if tau is a node and sigma is a prefix, then sigma is in T. Sigma is also a node. Now here, uh, because we are talking about trees, usually the language of families is common. Yeah, we, I already said that every node can have at most two children. Right? Then we can talk about uncles, grandparent, grandparent. Every node has only one parent. Right? So what is the parent of 0, 0, 1? 0, 0. Then grand, grandparent. So this condition actually says that we are always closed under all our ancestors. Okay, so that's a tree. Okay, let's uh, proceed. Now, the problem that we are going to state is
if t is an infinite uh, rooted binary tree then does t have an infinite branch if t has an infinite uh, i mean if it is an infinite rooted binary tree does it have an infinite branch what do you think can it just spread out so much that it will cover infinitely many nodes without having an infinite branch infinite branch as in something like this yeah i mean this is a branch i just keep going down 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 what do you think should be should happen is the answer yes or no no why do you think no oh sorry yeah <laughs> why do you think yes yes because like if, then you can take like a finite union or, i mean like you can take the union of all the branches and that will be fine. that will be finite no that will be <laughs> i uh, take a moment to think about this no. yeah it looks kind of obvious that the answer should be yes you don't think so so it's like finite rooted tree it doesn't mean that can go infinitely down it doesn't mean that it can go infinitely down how are we defining an infinite rooted binary tree oh how are we oh uh, the definition is still the same 0 1 star yeah i mean you look at this 0 1 to the power n so this is a finite sequence obviously so countable union of finite sets is countable so i am giving you a countably infinite rooted binary tree so it's it still fits the bill yeah i mean the definition is valid i never said t has to be finite i gave you an example of a finite tree but that doesn't mean t has to be finite so every layer adds to like a power of 2 it is so we can say that if it terminates like so uh huh so suppose any is omega then Uh, for the number of nodes, we can say that the length would be log of omega base two. Length would be length uh, log of omega base two. Omega base two. <laughs> okay, I don't know how to do logarithms with ordinal numbers. <laughs> I mean, what could be the value of log of omega base two? It should be omega, if at all it exists. and why can't it happen that maybe there is one branch with length 1 then another branch with length 2 then another branch with length 3 and so on so forth why does it have to be the case that there is only one branch i mean there exists a branch which is infinite in length so infinitely rooted by it means that it extends infinitely it has infinitely many nodes i am not saying that it extends infinitely i, I don't even know what that means any other ideas 2 raised to the power n is infinite and n has to be infinite. who said that 2 raised to power n has to be chosen so that would be the number of nodes maximum if number n is the length of the if n is the length of this then what is the maximum number of nodes 1 plus 2 plus 2 square plus plus right okay sum of some geometric series that will be a finite number we are going to use that but i mean why am i asking it now because there is an this is an application of the completeness theorem we are going to prove it this statement using logic but it's not directly an application of the completeness theorem we have to go via the compactness theorem so on the next slide i am going to so this is called yeah the answer is yes and this is called konig's lemma
ओके एंड वी आर गोइंग टू प्रूव कोनिक्स लेमा यू हैव हर्ड द नेम ऑफ कोनिक हाँ सी एस बी थेरम्स प्रूफ वॉज बाय जूलियस कोनिक दिस इज अ डिफरेंट कोनिक इफ आई अंडरस्टैंड करेक्टली सो कोनिक्स लेमा एंड द प्रूफ इज वाया कॉम्पैक्टनेस Okay, so I'm going to state the compactness theorem now. So, compactness theorem can be described as a purely semantic version of the completeness theorem. by the way when people usually refer to the completeness theorem then they refer to both of them simultaneously completeness and soundness yeah because uh, well if your system is not sound then you might as well throw it in the bin okay so compactness theorem what does it state so if s is a subset of uh, i mean uh, maybe instead of if let me write suppose s is a subset of sl then s is satisfiable if and only if s is finitely satisfiable okay what is meaning of finitely satisfiable this means that every that each finite subset of s is satisfiable now which one do you think is easier to verify that s is satisfiable each finite subset is satisfiable although there are infinitely many of them that part is still easy to do and whenever you see the word finite what comes to your mind in in the context of propositional logic we have seen something that is always i mean that is always finite length of a proof is finite okay and as a consequence of that what did we prove the finite character lemma so every proof uh, if there is a proof of t from an infinite set then there is a proof of t from a finite subset and this is simply the analog of that so let us prove it very quickly yeah so one side i don't need to prove if s is satisfiable and v is a model of s then v is a model of every finite subset so i am not going to write this only the converse suppose s is unsatisfiable means contradictory then what will happen if it is not satisfiable then what do we know from slide 1 oh if it is not satisfiable then it is inconsistent then by completeness version 1 s is inconsistent then what can we say if it is inconsistent then what is a test for inconsistency then for for some for some t belongs to sl there is a proof of this contradiction by lemma 7 
yet there is a proof of a contradiction from S. Now, by finite character lemma, S prime proves negation T implies T for some finite S prime subset of S. Correct? Then again by lemma 7, lemma 7 is two way. Yes, so again by lemma 7, S prime is inconsistent and then what? If it is inconsistent then finally we use soundness version 1. If it is inconsistent then it is unsatisfiable and by soundness version 1 S prime is unsatisfiable and therefore S prime is a finite subset so that is insatisfiable therefore what can we conclude that S is not finitely satisfiable because one of its finite subsets was not satisfiable. So this is simple compactness theorem. It looks very simple now that we have proved completeness, but they are equivalent. Yeah? And compactness theorem is an extremely powerful tool in logic. Okay, model theory is really uh, model theory is the study of only semantics and Compactness theorem is the key to study model theory. Uh, so, we have just proved compactness theorem and now we are ready to attack our problem which is Koenig's lemma. So, let us state the Koenig's lemma. So, if T is an infinite rooted binary tree, then T has an infinite branch. Okay, we have to do quite a few things over here. So first of all, let us define Tn to be the set of all those nodes in T whose length is n. Yeah, length you understand? It's a finite string of symbols, finite word of symbols. So 0, 1, 0 has length 3. Yeah, so Tn is this. Now the observation that you all made some time ago is that clearly Tn is finite. But another observation that we can make and non-empty. Why is it non-empty? See, if you chop down the tree at level n, then there cannot be anything below that level because whatever is below that level, it will have a parent, it will have a prefix at level n. So therefore, if this does not exist, then nothing below it exists and therefore, we can conclude that the tree is finite. So obviously, we, we are not given that T is finite, we are given T is infinite. So therefore, Tn is non-empty for each 
n less than omega. n is arbitrary. Okay. Now we are supposed to find a single branch. What property will that branch satisfy? If you look at this particular tree and suppose this is my red branch, yeah? then notice this particular level. What happens at this level? How many nodes are actually present in that level and which intersect the branch? Exactly one. Yeah, we have to express that there is exactly one node at each level. And moreover, observe that since 100 is there in that branch, its parent is also there. Right? Its parent is also there. So whenever sigma is less equal tau and tau belongs to the branch, then sigma must belong to the branch. We are going to encode all these things in terms of some propositional formulas. Yeah, that's our goal. If we do that, then we can use compactness theorem. We will write down an infinite set of formulas and we want to show that it is satisfiable okay and it is satisfiable if and only if it is finitely satisfiable so we'll verify finite satisfiability so that's our way of operation okay so define l what is l our language L to be P sub sigma such that sigma belongs to D. So we have taken a set of propositional variables, one variable for each node of the tree. So this is a countable language. Okay. Uh, so consider the following set of formulas okay so I'm going to call it S okay so here I'm going to say Tn for n in n less than omega union un n less than omega union I'm just going to write this S sigma tau where tau is less equal sigma and tau and sigma are in the tree. So I'm going to take three different kinds of formulas. So the Tn, yeah, where Tn is the formula a big disjunction, but it is still finite of sigma and Tn that P sigma. What does this say? Oh, I mean uh, the intended meaning is that, I mean whenever we, we uh, will define a valuation, yeah, and the intended meaning of this valuation, we want to show that this set S is satisfiable. We'll prove that it is finitely satisfiable, but if it is satisfiable, then there is a valuation. So what is the intended meaning? Like maybe I should write that. Yeah, the intended meaning So, V of a formula T is true if and only if T, I mean uh, V of A, oh, maybe I should say V of a particular P sigma is true if and only if sigma lies in the infinite branch. 
the chosen infinite branch. That's our intended meaning. So we'll make a particular variable true if and only if this happens. So with that idea, can you understand what this is trying to say? Either P sigma 1 is true or P sigma 2 is true or P sigma k is true. One of them has to be true. So for everything in Tn, Tn is the nth level. So that means the branch must pass through level n. Right? So the infinite branch must pass through level n that is Tn. Then Un is the formula. What should it say? Exactly. exactly 1. So I should say that if sigma 1 and sigma 2 are both in level 2, then simultaneously p sigma 1 and p sigma 2 should not be true. And I should take a big conjunction. Disjunction. No. So this formula p sigma 1 and p sigma 2 that is not simultaneously true. So therefore this conjunction is always going to be false. Yeah, and therefore, what should I say? No, Conjunction. False for every level. Yeah, so it will be we want false to be? We want, we want this to be false for every level, right? Yes. So we need a conjunction there. Here? Yes. Yeah, and sigma. We want the formula to be true. Think about it. Yeah, I mean, that is where. Uh, Construction of these things is where your propositional logic knowledge comes into picture. So think about it properly. Sigma 1, we want some kind of conjunction or disjunction. And what do we want to say? That if sigma 1, sigma 2 belong to Tn and sigma 1 is not equal to sigma 2, yeah, that's our index set. Yeah, we'll always choose distinct pairs. But what exactly do we want? We want some formula to be true. So which formula should be true? Did you understand the first one? One of them should be true. Now exactly one should be true. Tell me. There is another problem in the tutorial yeah, that has similar flavor. You just have to construct these formulas and then you are done. The rest of the proof is quite standard. Do you want P sigma 1 and P sigma 2 to be true simultaneously? No. So maybe we are not writing the correct thing. Should we simply write? For each sigma 1 and sigma 2, p sigma 1 and p sigma 2 is false. Or NAND or NOR, whatever you can think of, come up with a formula. This is correct? Is everybody convinced? Both of them are not simultaneously true, then the convention will be. False for this and conjunction will be false, so the negation will be true. true. And their conjunction will be true. Their conjunction will be true. Correct? Is everybody convinced? So the infinite branch must pass through at most one 
नोड एट लेवल एन दैट इज द इंटेंडेड मीनिंग फॉर दिस पर्टिक्युलर स्टेटमेंट एंड फाइनली या व्हाट इज एस सिग्मा टाउ एस सिग्मा टाउ इज वेरी सिंपल टू स्टेट इट जस्ट सेस आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू राइट इट हियर दैट इज पी वेन एवर a descendant is in the branch then its predecessor is in the branch so now we know tau is less equal sigma so what should i write p sigma implies p tau okay okay so this is the formula and i already gave you the interpretation now uh, we need to show that we need that s is satisfiable by compactness it is sufficient to show that s is finitely satisfiable now you can see why finite satisfiability is useful over here s is infinite yes because s contains this this both of them are indexed by natural numbers and also t is infinite so the set of uh, related pairs in t pair of pairs of nodes that is also infinite but what will happen if you choose a finite subset how many of such formulas tn and un can it contain only finitely many so let s0 be a finite subset of s then let us choose choose and fix maximum n such that either tn belongs to s not or un belongs to s not okay so there will be a maximum number of course because it's finite then s not is contained inside the set tn n less equal n union un n less equal n union the last part i'm going to keep as it is s uh, what did we call it s sigma comma tau tau less equal sigma tau sigma is in t so s not is contained inside this we are going to show that the right hand side is satisfiable and therefore the left hand side because it's contained it will be satisfiable and since s not is arbitrary s will be finitely satisfiable okay okay so uh, how do we show we show that rhs is satisfiable now rhs is not finite at the moment but it is still manageable okay so now how exactly are we going to do that look at the tree yeah so suppose i have chosen this level 2 my capital n is level 2 yeah then what do i know about level 2 from next page level 2 is finite and non empty if it is non empty then how can i 
define a valuation. If it is non-empty, then I can say I'm going to uh, use yellow color. I'm going to say this particular variable is true. Then all its predecessors are true and everything else is false. If I say this, then what will happen? You look at this. Up to level 2, Tn will be true because there will be at least one uh, element intersecting that branch. Then Un will be true because there will be at most one element which intersects that branch and this will be true. Why will this be true? Because we only chose the predecessors of a fixed element. So either P sigma will be false or whenever P sigma is true then all its predecessors are true. We have ensured of that for only those finitely many nodes. So that's all. So since Tn is non-empty, choose some node. Yeah, I mean, uh, let me call that node choose sigma naught from Tn. Okay. Define a valuation V from L. Right now we are not going to do it for SL. We will just do it for L. L to true false by sending any sigma to true if sigma is less equal sigma naught and false, uh, I mean not false, we use a different symbol otherwise. Now this is an arbitrary function. I will leave this as an exercise. So please verify. Uh, v is a model of the left hand side. Yeah, I mean this is S1. V models S1 so that V models S0. Since S is S0 is arbitrary, S0 S is satisfiable, S is finitely satisfiable. I already gave you how to do it, I already told you how to do it, but you should just verify. Any questions? So, can you see that, I mean, a totally unrelated seeming problem can be solved using logic? Because logic is the language of mathematics. Yeah, we could guarantee existence of an infinite branch in an infinite binary rooted tree. Yeah, that's the beauty of compactness theorem and hence the branch of logic which is called the mod called model theory. Model theory is only study of semantics and its applications to algebra and other areas of mathematics. There is one very small thing that I want to talk about and that is decidability. When do we say, okay, so I want to talk about decidability of PL. PL stands for propositional logic. Okay. So the question is given a finite S and T in SL, does there exist a decision procedure, decision procedure or algorithm 
to check if t is a logical consequence of t or t is a, a deducible from t. Yeah, I can use any turnstile symbol. Does there exist a decision procedure like that? What is the meaning of a decision procedure? It says that some algorithm which will take S as an input and T as an input and it will tell me after a finite amount of time, that finite could be millions of years, but after a finite amount of time, it should be able to tell me whether T is a logical consequence of S or not, both. Yeah, It should be able to decide it completely. Does there exist some similar procedure? Uh, I mean procedure like that. You already know the answer. You just don't know that you know the answer. Yes? No, no, not, not using completeness. We don't need to do anything. I have stated the simpler version actually. I should state this problem instead. And then by using completeness, we just have to check logical consequence. And how do we check logical consequence? By using valuations. How many valuations will be relevant here? Two, two to the power yes, something. Cardinality of, Cardinality of? the finite character, like, mm. like whatever uh, you're using in the S. See. S is finite and T is a single formula. So S union singleton T is a finite set. So therefore, the number of propositional variables which appear in S and T are finitely many. Call that number N. You check for all those 2 to the power N valuations. Whenever a valuation, I mean this is a P1, P2, Pn, then you will have S1, S2, Sk, all the elements of S and then finally you will have a column for T. Okay, So, whenever in a row all the S1, S2, Sk are true, you just have to verify that T is true. T is true. And this, this can be done. Yeah? And with 100% confidence you can say it can take exponential amount of time, but it can be done. So the decision problem has a solution. So therefore, we say that using truth tables, yeah, it's not efficient. Yeah, it's uh, not efficient because exponential time. exponential in the number of variables, number of propositional variables appearing in S union T, but it can be done. So therefore, we say that PL is decidable. Another way to state that is that it is also recursively recursive set. The set of tautologies is a recursive set, which means you can list all the tautologies and also list simultaneously all the statements, all the formulas which are not tautologies. You can list the set as well as list uh, the complement in a recursive manner. At this point, I will uh, just guide you to one particular video. Yeah, and that video is by Spanning Tree. So please watch video by Spanning Tree. On halting problem. Okay, 
and this is not an optional thing yeah everybody should watch this okay let's stop